Gravity Group, get the right manufacturer. Let's not mess up another episode. <laughs> but of course, we're using the floodlights to, um, to, well, to flood the area with light. Not keeping them safe because they can fall through the track, but we're keeping them safe because we're, they're not going to suffocate. That's a win-win in my eyes. Yes, of course, this is a Theme Makers Toolkit special. You know, I waffle enough, so <laughs> this is just an opportunity for me to waffle more. <laughs> so I got carried away. You would not be surprised. Uh, <laughs> hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to this Chachalandia Extras episode where we're going to tear apart the uh, RMC and unpack the horrors of the bad decisions that I made in the last episode. <laughs> Hooray! Uh, so guys, thank you so much for all of your support for the last episode. Uh, I don't know where you all come from. Each episode I'm doing is just blowing up and I'm getting more and more of you uh, coming on board. So you are absolutely welcome here. Thank you so much. If you are new here, this is an extras episode that we do where we tear apart some of the builds. I show you how things are made. We talk through some of the reasonings uh, of things that I don't really waffle on about in the uh, main game or the main series because... You know, I waffle enough, so <laughs> this is just an opportunity for me to waffle more. <laughs> so, here we go. This is the RMC. Uh, I just need to address, by the way, something that I know you guys are already going to be keen on. If you did watch the last Extras episode, uh, you are going to have questions about this uh, that's in the background. So, please don't worry. This was originally here, and of course, this is now not going to be here. Um, I am still building around this. This is not going to go away. Uh, it's just going to be moved so I've got some markers and everything down that gives me a rough location of where I want some things I think this is probably going to be more here now um, but you know what that means I'm going to say nothing more about this you know what that is already if you are familiar with coaster design and what this actually means for the park so, 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 let's get started on this RMC, uh, which appears to have stopped at the top of the lift hill, so let's restart it. Uh, following your feedback from the last episode, I uh, completely forgot to do this before the episode went out. Yes, of course, I was going to swap out the trains. Um, so the, co the CCI trains, or the Great Coasters International trains, the whatever they're called, Gravity Group trains. Gravity Group, it's Gravity Group, get the right manufacturer, let's not mess up another episode. <laughs> <laughs> so the gravity group trains were still on this coaster and um, of course no I needed to swap them out for the RMC trains. That's what I've done. So the in-game RMC trains, trains, the Malice Unchained ones, they are now in here. So I just want to talk to you about how we ended up with the wrong coaster type because at the time it was a little bit devastating and I was far too deep into the episode to go back and fix it. So we ended up with a topper track instead of the iBox track and if you aren't familiar with the horrors of that then you need to go back and watch the episode and see what exactly what happened. I'm going to throw you a question to here though guys. Do you want me to reconvert this and to become an iBox topper, uh, an iBox track so that it's correct or are we happy with it is as it is? Let me know in the comments below please. But the thought process behind this anyway, I wanted a coaster uh, that was similar to uh, Lightning Rod at Dollywood in the sense that it was going to be a terrain coaster, it was going to be fast paced, uh, but it wasn't going to invert. It was going to be an absolute airtime machine, and I loved, loved it, loved it. And then I had this bright spark of going, actually, maybe it could invert just the once. So I started to research Outlaw Run and all of that sort of stuff, and thought, excellent, it could invert. Well, it wouldn't be a, a Chacho episode without someone getting carried away. So I got carried away. You would not be surprised. Uh, <laughs> and I ended up putting more inversions on it. Uh, and then I sort of did some research and thought, yeah, that's fine. It all fits. Everything's all good. Um, and then I got my research mixed up. So that's the thought process that went behind it. Um, we ended up with the topper track rather than the iBox track. And it all uh, goes in there. So anyway, let's do the obligatory, obligatory nighttime stuff. Uh, because you guys like to do the nighttime stuff. And I haven't actually shown you this one yet. So inside the station, we've got some very minimal uh, minimal lighting going on. Um, it, this actually does use the same technique that I've always used. You not you shouldn't be unfamiliar with this by now unless you're new. Uh, there's the, the grid of light. I can't select it because of the hitbox. Um, but there's the grid of lights that are living underneath the station. And they're coloured yellow. Uh, so that we've got a little bit of uh, ambiance to this. Uh, and then, of course, we've just got the lights um, from Theme Maker's Toolkit. You pull together. So there's a cable. Um, I'm going to pull this apart in a minute, by the way, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, but there's a cable, there's a lampshade, and there's a bulb. 
but they don't emit light so you just do the light and everything in here uh, inside the maintenance shed what's the best way to go uh, in here it's all very brightly lit it's just a workspace right so you've got all of the floodlights and everything that are in here and then in the queue line um oh I took many decisions on this one. Um, so we've got a couple of uh, the street lights that are scattered around just for ambience to make it look like you're in this western area. But of course we're using the floodlights to, um, to, well, to flood the area with light. <laughs> That's what they're there for, right? Uh, and then in the outside areas here, again, we're just accenting everything with the uh, street lights that come with the, the Western scenery theme and everything. Uh, and then you've just got the, the patio area, exactly the same principle. And then it's backed up by the flood lighting. And so you're actually flooding the area with some grey light. So it's not in the complete darkness and you're not at the mercy of the yellow light. And then down in this area, I haven't put any lighting and stuff in just yet other than a floodlight because uh, I need to start building this episode out that's going to come up here uh, so yeah that's pretty much how this looks from the top and as i said i wanted this to be a lightning run uh, a lightning rod style ride which uh, got a little bit out of control and as i said i got a little bit too deep into the episode to be able to fix it but please let me know in the comments below if you think i should uh, convert it to an ibox or are we just happy with it now let's start tearing some stuff apart shall we Alright then you guys, let's unpack this station then because this is something that you've asked me to pull apart and uh, we've actually got two things to do in this one, quite a lot to do. Uh, we're going to do the maintenance area as well so I can show you how that's all been pulled together. So we're going to start as always with the roof and uh, the roof is not on fire on this one. Uh, <laughs> it's just the Victorian tile roof, that's nice and simple. <laughs> so yeah, it's just the Victorian tile roof, it uses the one metre grid just to place it on a not so four metre um, span and it uses a 0.25 uh, height so that you can place it wherever wherever you want it uh, but the actual beauty of this station comes from within the beams now as I said in the last episode I wanted to make sure that I was bringing as much of the theme from the GCI uh, and the log flume over into this area so that we've got that co coherent consistent theme right uh, but we also needed to keep this as western as possible but as generic as possible that that comes with it so that's what i've done with these beams so you saw this technique over on the log flume um and i kind of used it a little bit on the gci as well and this like this idea of double beaming so these ones are the haunted house uh, beams that come with the spooky pack and they're just placed separately uh, side by side but the reason that i've done this side by side is so that in the middle here uh, so this beam here can then slot in the middle and you would then have some kind of join that is in the middle here so it connects uh, the three beams together so I've always made sure that the width between these two here is the same as this one here so if I pull that apart and aside you can now see that this is actually nice nice and simple so all I do to get this effect on here is place this one uh, that's at the same angle as the roof and then you lower the degree by maybe three three or four degrees it's not a lot that you need to do and you then just uh, place this one along this side and then match it up with a roof beam so everything is then connected and that's the key to this roof build all of your beams need to be connected to each other in some capacity so just remember that that's a thing uh, and then in the middle here just to add a little bit of sturdiness and a little bit of support I've just put some rope and everything in here and you'd be surprised at how effective this is Remembering that arches are your friends whenever you're using, not archers, <laughs> archers are for scale, <laughs> arches are for uh, uh, the strength in buildings, right? So you can place pretty much anything on top of an arch and it's the strongest thing that you, you'll find in nature or uh, engineering. <laughs> and so... That's what I've gone. Uh, that's what I've gone for there. Now, when we come into the actual station itself, uh, these pieces along here, uh, the runners, they are literally just the. Uh, I, can, I can't select it because of the the hitbox in game. Of course, I can't. But these are just the sci-fi uh, panels that you get, and you see me use this everywhere, right? It's just that hashing uh, hashing sign that you get uh, that's living in uh, here. So if I go to theme signs, it's this one here. Um, and then you've also got uh, the, the two, you've got the non-slip and the, uh, so this is the non-slip version and just the wall, the wall based version. So that's what I've done there is I've just lined that uh, across the side here. And then the actual control booth itself, the logo is just Theme Makers Toolkit letters. Uh, <laughs> 
I'm still hoping Spike gets the <laughs> gets the request for the sign, in which case that would uh, uh, go in here instead. But the uh, the actual console console area itself it's just made up of the um, haunted house wooden panel that you see. Uh, this beam, uh, this <laughs> this one single beam, uh, this along here, and then the haunted house beams along here as well like so uh, and then at the top here I've just used the haunted house plank so you can probably see that the spooky pack is going to be your friend on this one uh, yeah so I've just put that across there and then likewise with this one I've just topped it off with the same wood panel uh, the same uh, planks down this way so you've just got like that consistent that consistent design throughout and then the other side I've just made sure that this is an actual wall with the the beam itself not the beam sorry with the the panel itself just so you're topping it off and then um, I've continued along this uh, plank as a uh, skirting board I was like what's, what's it called uh, as a skirting board along the actual um, side itself and then coming into the actual base then of course you probably recognize it by now it's windows as walls but because you're not having to see the inside of this one you won't, you don't need to do the double siding uh, i mean you saw you've seen me use this so much like i've used it in the moomin build i've used it in previous builds i even used it probably in tapio so yeah uh, very very similar and then this is just the rough brick uh, that comes with the base game uh, i think this comes as part of the i think it's classified officially as the fairy tale theme um, but we tend to use it a lot in Western and Pirate. And then, of course, we've just got some kind of a liner uh, along the brick, just so you've got a clear distinction between where the brick ends and the wood begins. And then, of course, we've just got some kind of concrete pillaring that's going on with these beams. But this is where the trick then really comes in, and this is where that realism part really comes in. As I've mentioned, that all of the, bit, the beams and the pillars and everything would have a join point. And so we have to kind of represent those join points where we can. I did this in Raygate Lake on the bridge. Uh, I did it in Tapio on the station there. And I've also done it here. It's understanding that uh, it's going to need some kind of bolts or some kind of mechanism to fix the, the pieces together. And that's what I use. It's the brackets from uh, the TV screens. They're not just useful for ride photos, guys. You can use it for anything. <laughs> so that's what I've done here. Um, just put those in. And then I've done that wherever there's um, a thick enough join. So, And I've done it in the lines as well. So you can see here that you'd have a bolt here and a bolt here. Um, and then where you've got more intense, you then have two. And they're uh, in a panel of four. And then if I've ever got the, th the two thick beams coming together, I've used the same square of, of the bolts as well so um, that's kind of important that you have to remember that if you can uh, if you can synthesize it if you can represent it in a build then absolutely go ahead go ahead and do it and then coming down to underneath the station then uh, these are just the panels uh, the same beams that I'm using not beams they're not beams and they're not panels you need to get your teeth in come on <laughs> it's the planks <laughs> I'm using planks uh, for this one so yeah it's the planks that come with the spooky pack the haunted house set so that's all in there uh, and then on the transfer track this is just the cage ladders that we get uh, that's theme makers toolkit and i just use those absolutely everywhere because they are brilliant at making industrial sized spaces and then for the transfer track itself i kept this one nice and simple because the rmc transfer tracks are simple they are simple and elegant in design uh, so this one is a beam oh, i've not said beam for a while boom no i have said beam for a while because i keep mistaking it um yeah so that's the thing <laughs> So it's a Theme Maker's Target beam, uh, it's Hydro's beam, we all, we all know that, right? Uh, so that's all good. And then I've got the Iron Girder uh, that comes with the base base game. I think it comes in the Western pack or the Western scenery theme. Uh, then I've got a coaster support. Now I know that these coaster supports don't necessarily match up with it being RMC, but you do tend to find different supports, especially when it comes to industrial style plant areas. And by plant, I mean like plant machinery, not plant as in foliage uh, so you tend to find different uh, supports and everything and then I've also put in uh, electric cables that run from an electric cabinet as well because of course this would be powered underneath then you've got electric cables uh, not sorry electric cables electric cabinets are underneath here you have access into the maintenance area from the ground level uh, and you've also got access to the maintenance area at top level as well and then we've also got a garage door now you've seen me use this garage door everywhere it's almost like it's a template that i'm using uh, for most of my back of house and backstage areas but this one's just slightly longer this consists of a lot of theme makers toolkit in fact i think it's solely theme makers toolkit because this is a catwalk um 
a catwalk operating console that's just turned upside down. That's supposed to look like uh, the area where the garage doors roll up uh, and then they roll into. And then this is an hydro beam and then these uh, actual doors are made of hydro beams as well. But the hydro beams are made uh, one thick, then two thick, one thick, then two thick. So it's almost like it's a staircase effect. So if I pull this down, uh, that's the two thick. And then if I pull this down, that's the one thick. So you see, you see what I've done there? Uh, if I just pull this one down as well, there we go. So you can see that it's too thick, one thick, too thick, one thick. And it just gives the concertina effect in the garage doors. Um, and I, I quite like as well that there's a bit of a gap in here. That some, you sometimes see that, especially if it's a more of a mesh garage door rather than uh, a solid garage door. I mean, these don't have to be solid. You're not protecting anything from... Uh, elements or people or robberies or anything like that uh, so yeah it's good to just have a mesh on that one and then coming into the maintenance area so the roof you've seen me do this technique before this one finally uses something that's in game it's the rectangle uh, rectangle pieces that come in the art shapes and then inside I've just used all of the um, the metal walkways this I believe is the sci-fi stuff um, and that comes in here and that just creates a, a, a metal walkway. I wanted to have it as a mesh walkway rather than a, um, a solid walkway because you've got a workspace underneath, right? So you need to see what's going on down below through the floor as opposed to having to lean over into the track and looking down and stuff. Uh, it's so that you've got full visibility of this floor area below um, it's just in terms of health and safety. Uh, and yeah... You wouldn't necessarily need fences along here because you don't really have much of a fall risk. But what you might consider doing, which I didn't do on this one, it's, it is okay. But you might consider putting some kind of meshing or fence inside here as well. So that you, if somebody does happen to be standing on the track, then uh, if they do fall, then they're going to fall onto the mesh rather than fall through uh, the track. So just have that in mind. For this one, I think we're okay. Like I say, it makes me nervous. It makes me really, really nervous. But I've been to some parks where I've seen some stuff that's like, that makes me nervous. <laughs> you, just, you, you just get your ultra compliant mind on going, oh, I don't think that's right. But obviously it is because nothing's happened. So yeah, anyway. So it's fine. It's fine on this one. It's fine. We're done. Uh, <laughs> and then underneath here, you're used to how this is by now, right? So you've got all of the electric cabinets that will be lined up on one wall. Uh, you've got windows as walls. But unlike the station, this is uh, double sided. So we've got two uh, two doors either side. Uh, one that's facing or they're facing each other. There you go. That's a good representation. They're facing each other. So you've just got the planks. That are exposed either side so it makes it look like it's just a plank wall of course you could build your own walls using planks i've done that in raygate lake uh, it's quite intensive whoops it's quite intensive on the old uh on the old piece count and the old frame rate but you can do it, it works just it works just as well uh, and then these things here these are the girders the idea of this is that it just creates the same support structure uh, that you had on the uh outside on the transfer track so it's just the girders that are placed together and then these pillars they're just girders placed next to each other so that's all they are there's nothing there's nothing overly special about those but i wanted to have a thick panel that wasn't the roller coaster supports i wanted to have something different on this one something where uh, it would probably fit in and it would be forged to be like that shape and it slots in like a jigsaw and um, it just gives a bit of a, a sturdier roof support going on there and then of course you've got the lights uh, you've got the electric cables and everything that feed the lights that's all up here and then you've seen me do this this is another one of those templates that i seem to be using everywhere it's the ac units um, and I, I'm using it like that because it's just so effective and it's just so great so you've got the AC units and that's supplying the ventilation to the area remembering that this is going to be an area that's going to contain a lot of fumes it's going to take, contain oil uh, it might get hot so it's going to need some kind of extraction method so that you can keep your people safe I mean we're not keeping them safe because they can fall through the track but we're keeping them safe because they're not going to suffocate that's a win-win in my eyes. <laughs> so that's what we've done there. And then, of course, as I said, you've got all of the clutter that's living around uh, the outside. And then you also have an operating console inside the maintenance area that's then going to uh, operate the transfer track. So what would happen in this instance is you'd actually have two people. You'd have one person here and one person here, and they would both push the button, and then the transfer track would then operate. Uh, so that's done in the similar way of having to have all of your uh, ride operators pushing a button before the transfer train is allowed to be launched you have two people pushing the button here uh, which confirm that this area is free this area is free or clear um, and then it moves the moves the transfer track that way um, so I don't think there's anything else really particularly fun or important about this build it's all just simple effective stuff that you just place down uh, in a 
in, in a certain way. I mean, you've seen me do all the compliance signs before, so you know how all they are. Uh, you've seen me do all the clutter inside, so I haven't done any, any specific RMC clutter inside here. It's just ge generic clutter. So, what else then shall we go ahead and tear apart? Alright then guys, I missed this one over on the community tab last week. I'm really sorry, the episode was already recorded by the time this request had come in. But I did promise that I was going to come back and do this one. And you asked me to tear apart the western town area of the log flume. So here we go, here as promised. And as I said in the previous episode, I wanted this area and the town to feel like it's a real town when you're down at actual level. But I didn't want to put any effort into the insides. I wanted this to actually feel like it was... Uh, fascias and everything from the top so you can see that these would just be uh, like fascias of town buildings and Moomin over on his previous series has already taught us how you can have less is more when it comes to these sorts of things and how you can get some really effective results from doing things that are really really simple so I wanted to put that into practice here and just show like he knows what he's talking about and he knows what he's doing um, and it works here as well so Moomin big shout out to you uh, this is in favour of you pal uh, so here we go these buildings then, really nice and simple, uh, they are just made up of, uh, I think these are mostly in-game pieces actually, it's just the wood bits that you get in the western, we're just going to place this so we chop some heads off, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'll just place those in a, in a building, um, and then you just got the tile awning that's on the top here, um, that just creates the, the balcony, uh, not balcony, sorry, the, uh, the veranda. And then for the flooring, um, we've just got the normal wooden roof, the flat roof that, that comes in here. Uh, and then I've put a door, a couple of windows, and then I've used the natural wood plank pieces, you know, the, the, these roof trim pieces uh, on the top here. And then I've put some pillars to give it a lining on the outside. And then I just put a wheel just to put in, this, in the middle here. Um, if you Google uh, Wild West towns or Wild West town buildings, you'll find loads of examples that you can pull off and you can replicate them really, really easily in Planet Coaster because even though they're really intricate designs, they're also really simple to build as well. Um, and then I just cluttered the, the rest out so you'd you'd need somewhere to strap up your horse uh, so that's what we've got here there would be a chair uh, and there's just a couple of boxes and of course and I just put some town clutter you know like um, horse feed and of course you leave your dynamite out in the open just wild west <laughs> um, and then we come over to this building as well uh, is exactly the same principle it's just a box of wood um, and then I've just swapped out the styles. That's a pillar. Uh, I swapped out the styles a little bit. So I've just put the railing along here. And then you've got the roof uh, along this way as well. And again, just doors, windows, the same beams and the same roof. Just gives that consistent consistent theme, consistent style. And I actually ended up copying that and putting it here just so it's similar. But making a few subtle changes. So it's the same building, but it's just got a few real subtle changes. Like the pillars are in just a slightly different place. Uh, the light is missing. There's no clutter, the different clutter outside the front and everything. So like I say, really subtle stuff, but it's enough to make it look different whilst it's being the same. Uh, the salon, exactly the same thing. It's just a sign that's been placed on the top here, but the, the guiding principle remains... Uh, remains the same. You've just got the, the pieces. It's a box, some stuff on the front, the stairs. So the stairs come in game. Um, it's the wooden deck stairs. Uh, it's this one here. Uh, I think this comes in two sizes as well. I think there's a bigger one. This is just a smaller one of the two. Um, and then, yeah, clutter on the outside and, and that sort of stuff. And then I also wanted there to be a bit of a signature building in the town. And this would almost be like the, the tavern or uh, the hotel, maybe don't need to do any depth to it because you're only doing it from this area you just need to believe that it's a hotel and this idea came from uh there's a, a youtuber what, that i'm watching at the moment that's uh, bought the town cerro gordo um and he's talking about the american hotel and it but sadly burnt down last year and he's going through a process of rebuilding it at the moment so uh it's all of the plans and everything but if you look at the original hotel this is um almost not paying homage to it because it's <laughs> doesn't mean anything to me uh, but I just wanted to use that style just because it's it, you know it's Cerro Gordo it's it's an awesome little mining town and this is exactly what this would feel like right um, and so it's the same principle as all of the others it's just all of the wood the wood pieces that you get that are the, the trims and I've until this build I've never really been able to find a use for these like um, other than planters and stuff but now i've actually got a building use hooray um 
And then you just got the, again, it's the box, it's the beams, and then you just put a, a veranda and a balcony, a balcony on the front, a couple of doors, and the same consistent windows, clutter it out with some lights, and of course the cowboy that's resting on the uh, on the wall, and the anvil, and you're away. I want a cactus. What western area is not complete without a cactus? Uh, and then this other building, same principle, right? So you get the idea by now, it's the awning, it's the window, uh, it's the same flat roof piece cluttered out with a chair um, and some hay bales. These hay bales, by the way, they come from the Maker's Toolkit as well. Um, this is this one, the PEP, Wild West Hay Bale. Comes from the Maker's Toolkit. And then cluttered it out with some railway sleepers because this is next to the railway line. Um, so I wanted this to, to feel like it was a railway line. And if you remember back to the episode where I said I didn't know what, what I was going to do in terms of the sight lines because... I didn't know what was going on in this area, but this, I just put some trees up, so from here it's not entirely obvious. But you do still have a sight of the coaster from behind. It was very important to me that there was a gap in the trees, so that when you're on the log flume you can still see that there is something. And this is almost like because it feeds through into the western area, and it makes it subliminally that this coaster is actually part of the western area, and it, and it draws it back in whilst being out. So you'd imagine that this would be like some kind of oil rig or something like that mining shaft or whatever um that's kind of the feeling uh, that's kind of the thought process that i wanted to uh, wanted to go on here so that's the western town anyway let's go ahead and tear something else apart right so the last thing then to rip apart in this episode are the ticket booths because this is what you guys have asked me to do and yes of course this is a theme makers toolkit special this contains what three or four items from the actual main game itself so yeah sorry console guys you are probably going to struggle uh, with this one but if I just take the roof off, you can see that this is desk B. So of course it comes with a desk A and a desk B in the actual workshop itself. Uh, so if I just move this out of the way, there's the first bit of the roof. And then underneath this, I just have some kind of lining along the roof. And I do this on my paths where you can hide lots of misdemeanors by coloring, by creating a line and coloring in. Uh, so I do the same on this roof. I just use the hydro beams just to give myself a little bit of a, a roof shape outline so that I can hide all of the beams that are going to be clipping through uh, on the underside. So there's a bit of trickery going on involved there because there you go, our beams are no, now no longer level. So the walls, you've seen me do this before, I just quite literally create a wall using the squares, right? So that's the square shape. Um, so I just place the wall that way and then on the back side because I always want my inside walls to be like a different color whoops a different color to the outside walls and obviously you, we don't have two tones so I just place them twice so I color the first one in whatever color I want and then the back side in a different color and then now I've got a wall that looks like it's an actual an actual wall and it also means that because it's not so thick I'm not so dictated to by the game's strategy of how it wants to do walls because the the walls are actually really quite thick in game um, and then on the cladding itself so I just do cladding that sits on the front here like that um, and then these beams themselves they are literally hydro beams so they're all in uh, some kind of a line um, and they go all the way up so if I just pull this out for a moment there we go uh, and then in terms of the color I chose three colors that I wanted to go between so I had the pink that's living right at the top uh, and it comes down to this pale blue down here and then down to the purple this way and then all I did was I systematically went from top to bottom uh, choosing the colors and changing the temperatures as I went along so for this one I chose this really uh, like nice mauve um, and then for the next color I use the same mauve but I then change the temperature using the advanced color picker um, and then I did the same with the next color down so I chose the color from before and then changed the temperature and then the color from before changed the temperature and you just keep going down but you have to go through the spectrum so when you're now wanting to go from the pink to the purple this is when you then need to change the colors along the right hand side here um, and then you just go through that same spectrum um, down to the blues and then you repeat that process until you get to the to the purple at the end right and that's as simple as as, as simple as that uh, so the actual uh, screens themselves here they are just screens so there's the screens and then on the underneath I've put the hydro numbers rather than doing uh, images and everything that lives on the actual screen uh, I've just sunk the hydro numbers into the screen and then you've got your 
you're next. Next person, please. Uh, and then you've got the windows. So this is where we start to really fight with hitboxes and we really start to fight with how the game wants you to deal with certain things. And there's some some creators have nailed their hitboxes on their uh, on their theme maker stalker items like Hydro, amazing at hitboxes. But there are some out there that really probably should look at how the hitbox works. <laughs> so we might struggle on this one. Uh, particularly, actually, the in-game glass is quite difficult. So here we've got in-game glass that's already selected. So I'm just going to pull this out uh, because we don't we don't actually need that, right? So then the windows themselves, these are just a massive collection of hydro beams that are using different widths and different sizes and different heights and stuff, right? So if I select these like so and then just pull this out, there's my window frame. And that's how my window frame looks. And then I've just sunk the glass, if I can just get this into the right position. I can't even see where the glass is. Uh, there we go, it's there. So I've then just sunk the glass into the into the window frame, right? So it now just works. And then on the inside, I used these uh, blinds. Again, they are on the Theme Makers Toolkit uh, download. And these come in different lengths. So there's a one meter, two meter, and a four meter. I don't know if there's a three, but there's definitely one, two, and four uh, in length. So no matter what size your window is, you've got a, a, a blind that would work, a Venetian blind that works. And then on the inside, the the guess what this is? It's the desk. Uh, so we're using the same desk for the actual ceiling and the roof as we are for its actual intended purposes, the desk. So this is just uh, the desk pieces. And then this office is really small. Uh, and then the desk pieces. And then we just support it with an hydro beam. Just to make sure that we've got some kind of uh, leg access on here, right? And then we've got... Uh, the computer monitors and then just loads of theme makers toolkit office clutter that we use everywhere else right you see me use this everywhere i've then aligned the theme makers toolkit posters to the windows to make it look like these are like advertising signs uh, and then i've also got the chip and pin card readers that live out the side of the front here now there are some kind of touchscreen tills that you could use instead that have already got the chip and pin readers installed in them so you could swap out your computer for those touch screens if you wanted to but i've gone down the route of having two separate separate ones and then on the back side um i just kept this nice and clean right so uh i didn't want this to have too much detail or too much fuss made on it because this would just be the back side that no one really sees unless you're on the flying coaster and in which case you're too busy being on the flying coaster to notice <laughs> and then just on the outside if i just put all of this stuff back Oh, there we go. So on the outside then, I just used the same technique that we did for uh, Sun Giant, where I've just lined off all of the pathing um, with some kind of concrete. And then on the underside, which I think is outside of a building, uh, like so... Just move these as well. So on the underside then, um, I've just morphed all of the train around so that I can put this flat roof flooring uh, so the smooth concrete flooring in, uh, like so. Um, so I've got my path, then I put the, the smooth concrete floor, uh, or it's actually a roof, the smooth concrete roof down. Um, then I line off my area that I want, and then I just finish the job and put all of the hydro mulch in. So it now actually just looks like a really smooth uh, plaza area, like so. And that's that's just how that's how that's all pulled together there's no real massive trickery involved as such it's just very creative ways of using the theme makers toolkit pieces and that's how i've done the outside so guys thank you so much for getting to the end of this episode but guys if you have found this helpful then please leave a like on the video leave a comment come over to the community tab and say hi because we love interaction with everybody and guys thank you so much until we speak again i'll see you next time look after yourselves keep safe Bye bye